Hello, my name is Martin Marsman. I still consider myself fairly new to Ridgecrest Regional Hospital, EMS, and Liberty Ambulance. I've been here since March of 2020, but I've been in emergency medical services or EMS for a very long time. I've now been a paramedic uh, a little over 26 years. I've been in EMS for over 30 years, and I absolutely still love what I do. What got me into the field was I was graduating high school and I was at that pivotal point in life where what am I gonna do when I grow up? And I had a police officer friend of mine uh, who lived across the street, he and his family. Obviously he was older and he asked if I uh, ever thought about being a paramedic. And when he said that word, I knew a little bit of what I saw paramedics doing on television and movies, but for some reason it just resonated in me. I literally had the light bulb moment where I thought, yes, I think that would fit perfectly with what I wanted to do. Uh, to say I like to help people is, uh, is an understatement, and I never like anything bad to happen to people, but if it does, and it will, uh, accidents do happen, illnesses do happen. I really like being the person to be there. So that's always been a, a very fortunate side that it just uh, seems to meld well with my skill set and what I'm able to provide. What do I love most about being a paramedic? I, I love a lot of things. It's hard to say. It's like uh, which of your children uh, or your pets do, do you love the most? So there's different aspects to it. Uh, number one, I love being a part of the community. That, that's certainly important, but there's also different types of communities. There's a community in which we serve, uh, so the public. There's the camaraderie that we have in our own stations and in our own agencies and organizations, uh, so that can become a family. Uh, there's the uh, additional agencies that we sometimes work with, so we get to see a different side of the hospital and of law enforcement and of the fire departments that, that we work so closely with and sometimes in very stressful and uh, um, um, highly important situations. So the best thing is uh, knowing that when there's a tragedy, which is often why we're called, uh, sometimes it's, it's an expected tragedy, sometimes it's an unexpected tragedy, uh, that we're there and maybe we're able to uh, provide some measure of comfort or solace or relief uh, for whether it's the patient, but sometimes it's also the patient's family members who are most impacted by what we do. So that, that's, a, that's a great feeling and that gives me uh, uh, a purpose. The term first responder is uh, very popular over the past few years, uh, certainly uh, since 9-11 and I was on duty uh, both 9-11 and 9-12. Uh, so I'll never forget those experiences. But the first time uh, I thought about this question recently, we had uh, responded to a grave emergency, one of the most dire emergencies that we can have in this field. And the first responders were actually the bystanders, the citizen bystanders who were first initiating aid to the victim. So these were people who had no medical background, uh, but luckily they knew enough about CPR that they were able to initiate it on a non-family member. So basically a stranger or at least someone that wasn't a, a blood relative to them. And so those were the first responders. They were the first people to take up the call to action. They saw that a need uh, uh, was required and they didn't hesitate. But what's also interesting is during that uh, call, uh, we required more help from the other people who were bystanders there uh, because it took a while to get all the necessary professional first responders there. So we actually got to enlist the aid of people who were standing by, uh, for lack of a better term, hesitant to get involved, but they still stepped up to the action. So for first responders, uh, anybody can be a first responder. It's whoever the first person uh, or group of people who are there willing to help, willing to do something. And we get to see that on a lot of calls, even uh, the most simple calls where it's just calling for help and maybe sitting there and comforting the person and making sure that no further harm or ailment comes to them. So any advice to the community? Uh, yes, we are uh, in such a time that it's very important that you take care of yourself. Uh, I, I uh, have this talk with each of my partners when I'm assigned a new partner, uh, regardless of their experience, that I let them know uh, from our very first beginnings in training, 
in emergency care, we, we learn a term called scene safety, and it's all about making sure that we are safe before we ever enter any type of environment, whether it's a home or whether it's on the streets, that we have to make sure that it's safe for us, then we make sure it's safe for the patient. So we're always looking for ourselves uh, uh, to be safe first. Um, in order that we can safely provide care uh, to people and continue to provide that care. But so with, with the public, I, I want you to know, take care of yourself. Make sure that you're doing things and taking measures um, to take good care of yourself. But here's the second piece of advice to that. Uh, it, when you're taking care of others, uh, that's also important to further take care of yourself. Uh, it's not uncommon for me to take a gravely ill or injured person to the hospital. And one of the things I like to do is I reconnect with the family while they're, uh, if they're in the waiting room or maybe they came along to the hospital with us. And I make sure that if it's something like a really serious life-threatening illness or injury, that the family knows whether it's the spouse, whether it's the parent, whether it's the child, uh, whoever the immediate family members, that they know that they need to continue to take care of themselves. That means eat when you're not hungry. That means drink when you're not thirsty. That means get some rest and relief, reprieve. Uh, when you don't feel the need to because the, once you allow us to take care of your loved one then we take them to the hospital where they're going to take good care of your loved one the real task and pressures are going to come when the individual comes home they're going to need you to be at your top strength then not while they're in the waiting room not while they're in the emergency room not while uh, they're with us the real test is going to come when they get home that you're then able to be at your best and provide care for them. So take care of yourself and take care of others.